survives Ebola. In sports, Mohamed Salah wins BBC African Footballer Award for a second straight year. And in the US, Obamacare has been thrown out by a judge, raising insurance uncertainty. with a special report and just a month ago since best water was suddenly banned by the food safety and quality authority from local markets the producer of the water company social industry has finally broken silence over the matter with a stronger quality and hygiene promise it's just over a week since the suspension on best water was lifted following an official release by the Food Safety and Quality Authority, no. notifying the public that best water can be sold again. When you go to Best now, you'll find that the environment has changed a lot. There are people walking there, have uniforms. The shoes they wear outside of the production area are different from the shoes they wear inside. So, and then, of course, when we test the water, because if you recall earlier, when, when we stopped the water, we had said the water was looking red, the coloration and the scent. We think it was the pipe, which we've asked them to change. But when we test the water, we found out that it wasn't a safety issue, more of a quality issue, that what we saw there was too much iron, which could be from the pipe. And what the iron does, it might not affect you health-wise, but it's, it doesn't taste right. It's unpalatable and it's unacceptable because we ex expect water to be clean, white color and without any scent. So the reason we're opening them now is that they have done everything we've asked and within a shorter period. Having now cleared best water to resume sales at market, Paradise TV took time to engage the public what they make of best water suspension. No, I did not experience any such. And when my customers, when they buy it, they never complain anything to me. So I was just hard and rumors that best water is not good, it's not good. But my customers since now, they never complain. I will still continue to sell it as far as I do not see any, any effect on it. I will still continue to buy it. Leon will be like, let them continue the business. Because looking at it, number of Gambians are employed in the company there. And they are, you know, using that, you know, money for survival. So at the end of the day, allowing the company to continue production, at the end of the day, it will, you know, increase the number of employment opportunity rather than just closing it. Because if the product... The problem is being solved. I think there is no need, you know, of shutting sorting it down. Let them continue production and, you know, let them increase the employment opportunity of the youth. Well, the public have had their say and so does the official of the sunshine industry with a strong promise. The company says it has always maintained standards of quality water over the last five years. Sanjay C. Punjabi is the CEO of Sunshine Industry. Uh, we have a good numbers and I really appreciate each and everyone working at Sunshine Industries. The staff were very cooperative during those short break we had. They would come every day to the work without we giving us them any notice or say that we are shut down. They were coming, we were working on the improvement notice together. We paid each and every staff for that particular period. We did not cut. Any salary, we did not go. Sanjay Foda recollects the stressful moment the suspension had on them, as it was a huge damage to the company that makes sales nationwide. Well, it was a shocking uh, a short break what we had, because we are in the pocket for the last five years, and uh, we have always maintained the standard, the quality, but it was a really shocking for us for the improvement notice what we got and what had to be done. We did everything what the authorities wanted us to do it, and we are back. For the fact that Best Water was suspended from local markets, the company still maintains its staff and has paid to them their full November salary. CEO Sanjay expressed his gratitude to staff for immense support. First, it was a really uh, trauma to us to take it that we were suspended because we believed all the time we were leading in the market. Like we are available everywhere, so for us the availability which was not for some times, that was really because we never saw this, uh, that in all these days. And uh, Best Water has now resumed sales at local markets with a much stronger willpower to deliver the best of water quality to the public. 
Khadija Bokum, Paradise TV News. From that, now a foundation stone for a 50-kilometer road and four bridges in the Upper River region was laid on Saturday in Basse by President Adam Abaro. The road and bridge project constitute the first major infrastructural development project of Barrow's administration, following months of institutional reforms and empowerment of the transitional justice mechanism of the country. The purpose is to support the Gambian authorities in the implementation of stability-oriented microeconomic policy. It will both seek to facilitate the transition towards a new program with the International Monetary Fund and elevate the government financing gap by safeguarding specific social expenditures. The Minister for Finance and Economic Affairs, Mambure Njai, said the deal marks the beginning of one of those significant project support outlined for various sectors. As today's signing ceremony kicks off, one of those significant project support in A, direct budget support, two, irrigation project in agriculture with the objective to increase food sufficiency and develop commercial crops for and access to water in urban areas to improve and develop sustainable public services and also build capacity in debt management, SOE reforms and health services. For his part, the ambassador of France to Gambia and Senegal, Christophe Bigot, reaffirmed France's support to the Gambia with further promises of project support. We are resuming financial cooperation. Um, the last time was in 1994. And it was, as you pointed it correctly, uh, um, assistance provided, a uh, loan provided to Gamtel. So quite some time ago, but... We are resuming this cooperation, and this step is only the first step of further measures. And you have to see this in the context of, uh, of uh, relaunching. Further to the 2017 democratic transition in the Gambia, the government of France expressed its willingness to work toward the renewal of its diplomatic and economic relations with the country promise has now been fulfilled and the country hugs for more project support. Binta Yalo, Paradise TV News. Meanwhile, the Honorable Minister for Finance and Economic Affairs and the French Development Agency has signed a financing agreement that formalized 5 million euros, an equivalent of 250 and 65 million dollars in budget support to the Gambia. The deal reached during the International Donor Conference for the Gambia in Brussels in May 2018. After finance had promised the, con the constitution to economic establishment of the country, Binta Jallo has more of the story. towards a new program with the International Monetary Fund and elevate the government financing gap by safeguarding specific social expenditures. The Minister for Finance and Economic Affairs, Mambure Njai, said the deal marks the beginning of one of those significant project support outlined for various sectors. As today's signing ceremony kicks off, one of those significant project support in A, direct budget support, two, irrigation project in agriculture with the objective to increase food sufficiency and develop commercial crops for and access to water in urban areas to improve and develop sustainable public services and also build capacity in debt management, SOE reforms and health services. For his part, the ambassador of France to Gambia and Senegal, Christophe Bigot, reaffirmed France support to the Gambia with further promises of project support. We are resuming financial cooperation um, the last time was in 1994 and it was as you pointed it correctly uh, um, assistance provided uh, loan provided to Gamtel so quite some time ago but we are resuming this cooperation 
and this step is only the first step of further measures and you have to see this in the context of uh, of uh, relaunching Further to the 2017 democratic transition in the Gambia, the government of France expressed its willingness to work toward the renewal of its diplomatic and economic relations with the country. Promise has now been fulfilled and the country hugs for more project support. Binta Yalo, Paradise TV News. We apologize for that wrong insert. Now a foundation stone for a 50-kilometer road and four bridges in the Upper River region was laid on Sunday in Basse by President Adam Abaru. The road and bridge project constitute the first major infrastructural development project of Barrow's administration following months of institutional reforms and empowerment of the transitional justice mechanisms of the country. The Upper River Region Road and Bridge Project is a grant from the friendly government of the People's Republic of China in the tune of 50 million US dollars, an equivalent of 265 million dollars. Once completed, would have a positive ripple effect on the socio-economic welfare and well-being of the people of the region by boosting trade and facilitating easy access to social and economic services. The landmark development project is aimed at enhancing easy and fast communications between the Upper River region of north and south of the Gambia for every inhabitant. This forms part of the government's policy of rebuilding regional economies and fostering an all-inclusive development for all and sundry. The road and bridge projects for Basse Koina Road, Basse Wuli and Fatoto Pasamas Crossings, Chamoy Bridge and Sudu Wall respectively constitute the first major infrastructural development project of the Barrow administration following months of institutional reforms and empowerment of the transitional justice mechanisms of the country. It was on May 19th last year that China and the Gambia entered into such an agreement to boost economic and technological cooperation. From that story, Business News is up next. In business, an estimated budget of more than $25 billion for the 2019 fiscal year has been tabled before lawmakers for consideration and approval. The budget appeared was the budget speech was delivered by the Minister for Finance and Economic Affairs, Mambure Njai, outlining the fiscal, monetary and economic programs of the government of the Gambia for the year 2019. Lamin Fal attended this event and now he files his report. Less than 24 hours after lawmakers rejected the supplementary appropriation bill for the fiscal year 2018, the finance minister on Friday presented the appropriation bill for the fiscal year 2019 to National Assembly members for adoption. In delivering his budget speech, the Minister of Finance, Mamboure Njai, gave an account of the total revenue and expenditure for the 2019 fiscal year and their driving force. The total revenue and grants for 2019 is estimated at $25.3 billion, that is 28% of GDP. A 28% growth from $19.8 billion, that's 25% of the whole GDP budgeted in 2018. This is mainly due to an increase in both domestic revenue and grants inflow compared to the budgeted amount in 2018. Total expenditure and net lending is projected at $28.7 billion, that is 32.8% of GDP in 2019 from $20.8 billion budgeted in 2018, representing an increase of 38.4%. The bulk of which is budgeted for current expenditure. Expenditure on personnel emoluments is projected to increase from $2.8 billion in 2018 to $4.1 billion in 2019, mainly due to the 50% salary increment for civil service servants that will be implemented in 2019. 
On the much talked about 50% salary increment and 100% pension increment, the minister stressed that it is achievable. We would never have proceed with it without knowing that we can do it. It's achievable, it's sustainable. So I said it's domestic resource mobilization. We need to be more efficient in our collection and we need to be prudent in our expenditure. Because the salaries of the civil servants of Gambians are so poor that at least they need some upliftment. And I have also said that we are going to study to give them health care. The civil servant is sick, will always go and buy a paracetamol instead of going having that card to go to the pharmacy or to go to a private hospital and then be cured. I think they deserve it. And as far as I'm concerned, the civil servants deserve more. If I have the resources, I'll give it. The speaker on her part announced the date for the debate and consideration of the appropriation bill. Honorable members, in pursuance to clause 71.2 of the standing orders of the National Assembly, the debate proper on the appropriation bill shall be adjourned to Monday the 17th of December 2018. And now to news from other parts of the continent. A baby girl who was diagnosed with Ebola when she was only six days old has survived health officials in the Democratic Republic of Congo have confirmed. The child who was recovered from the virus is now called the Young Miracle as death toll increased to 289. Here is a detail of that report. Baby Benedict's mother was infected with Ebola and died during childbirth. Benedict showed symptoms only days later and it has five weeks of round clock treatment to keep her alive. Her dad and aunt took her home on Wednesday. Ebola is a deadly infection that causes severe fever, vomiting, diarrhea and internal and external bleeding. About half of those infected die but babies are even less likely to survive. Tales of survival like Benedict's are rare. She was cared for at the Ebola treatment center in Beni, the city hardest hit by the outbreak in DR Congo. She is the youngest patient for whom doctors and volunteers there have cared. The little girl has become known as the miracle of Beni. Elsewhere, heavy fighting between ethnic groups in southern Ethiopia has killed at least 21 people and wounded 61. Its state news agency said on Saturday, amid escalating violence that has sent hundreds fleeing across the border to neighboring Kenya. Outbreaks of violence in the south between the Oroma and the other groups have escalated since Prime Minister Abe Ahmed, the first leader from the Aroma ethnic group in Ethiopia's modern history, came to office in March. Fighting broke out between Somalis and Oromos in Moyali, a town bordering Kenya on Thursday and Friday, the Ethiopian news agency said, citing Sarah Mohammed, deputy spokesman of Somalia Regional State. He said some of the displaced had fled Kenya, while those who had stayed in Ethiopia were receiving humanitarian aid. The two groups have been engaged in prolonged conflict, which has however intensified in recent months. Early this year, at least 5,000 Ethiopians were forced to seek refuge in Kenya after several civilians were killed in what the Ethiopian military said was a botch security operation targeting militants in the country's south. Still in the news across Africa, neighboring militaries has revoked its earlier decision to suspend activities of the UN Children's Agency, UNICEF, in the northeast of the country. The military said this came after extensive deliberations during emergency talks with UNICEF officials. Earlier on Friday, the army had accused the agency of spying for Islamist militants in the restive region. Millions of the people displaced by Boko Haram insurgency in the northeast are dependent on humanitarian aid. In a statement, the army said that it had lifted a three-month ban on UNICEF's operations. It said that during the meeting, it urged UNICEF representatives to ensure they share information with relevant authorities whenever induction or training of new staff is being conducted. The statement came just hours after the military had accused the UN agency of spying for Islamists. This is not the first time the army has taken dramatic action against the UN agency. In April, 
the military declared three UNICEF workers non grata following leaked allegations of sexual abuse by Nigerian soldiers. That decision was also swiftly reversed. Nigeria's northeast have been devastated by a decade-long insurgency by Boko Haram and its splinter group Islamic State West Africa. More than 30,000 people have been killed and many more driven from their homes. And still ahead in that news, we have sports and news from, from across the globe. Please stay with us. We'll be right back after this short commercial break. The difference between us and other media houses is that we have the best quality materials. Well, working here, it's exciting. I study video editing in Mediamatic. Mediamatic has a great impact in my company. I'm very proud to be here. This is Mediamatic. Mediamatic. We are the media. Paradise FM. Best radio Best in town. With Paradise FM, you'll serve the latest tunes. Hip-hop and R&B. Reggae. Salsa. Mbala. Broadcasting live 24-7 on 105.7 FM. As well as online streaming on www.paradisefm.gm with the best quality audio output. Find the best DJs and presenters to entertain you with a high level of professionalism. Investing in the latest high-tech equipment, your adverts are played with the best automation software that gives you an exact schedule for real-time monitoring. Absolutely number one. Welcome back and now on to the spot. Mohamed Salah has won the 2018 BBC African Footballer of the Year Award for the second year in a row after he clapped a spark in 2018 for the club and country. The Egypt and Liverpool forward won the Premier League Golden Boot with 32 goals in May and scored 10 Champions League goals as Liverpool reached the final. He also scored both of Egypt's goals at the World Cup. The 26-year-old beat met Hibanatia, Kalilu Kulubali, Sajamane, and Thomas Partey to the prize. The Premier League Sir Player of the Year scored 44 goals in 52 games for Liverpool last season. It's a great feeling to win again. I am happy and I would like to win it also next year, said Salah. As well as inspiring his club to the Champions League final, Salah scored twice for Egypt at this year's World Cup, having netted both goals in the match which took his country to the tournament for the first time since 1990. There have been many good moments in 2018, he added. The game against Roma at Anfield, the Champions League semi-final first leg, was unbelievable. I am scoring goals and helping the team to get the points to be top of the league. That's always a very great feeling. Salah said his aim for the 2019 is to win something with the club. And with that sport news, global news is right after the break.
has happened, will happen, may happen, is happening. Let us know. Send an email to info at btv.gm or call us 611-1666. Paradise TV, reflecting Gambia. Do you know that when you replace incandescent bulbs with LED energy efficient bulbs, you save energy. Replace all incandescent bulbs with LED energy efficient bulbs. Whenever you save energy, you save money. Climate talks in Poland have continued through the right as negotiations try to agree the next steps forward for the Paris Climate Agreement. Thousands of delegates worked well past the official deadline for reaching a deal, but key sticking points remain. We have a detail of this in this report. Rows continue over the issue of paying poorer countries for damage caused by global warming and the use of carbon markets to reduce emissions. The likelihood of a deal increased on Friday after a new text was released. The outline decision contains plans for a common rule book for all countries with flexibility for poorer nations. There are also calls for all countries to increase their carbon cutting commitments by 2020. But many issues are not yet settled as developing countries seek recognition and compensation for the impact of rising temperatures. The issue of being legally liable for causing climate change has long been rejected by richer nations who fear huge bills well into the future. Representatives from 196 states are trying to sort out some very tricky questions pertaining to the rule book of the Paris Agreement, which comes into force in 2020. These are the regulations that will govern the nuts and bolts of how countries cut carbon, provide finance to poorer nations, and ensure that everyone is doing what they say are doing. It sounds easy, but it's very technical. At the moment, countries often have different definitions and timetables for their carbon cutting actions. However, some progress is being seen in shaping the rules. And finally, a federal judge in the, in the U.S. state of Texas has ruled that a key part of the Affordable Care, better known as Obamacare, is unconstitutional. Obamacare was struck down by a Texas federal judge in a ruling that cast uncertainty on insurance coverage for millions of U.S. citizens. The decision on Friday finding the Affordable Care Act unconstitutional comes at the tail end of a six-week open enrollment period for the program in 2019 and underscores a divide between Republicans who have long sought to invalidate the law and Democrats who fought to keep it in place. The White House said the ruling will put on hold during an appeals process that's destined to go all the way to the U.S. Supreme Court. Texas and an alliance of 19 states argue to the joy that they've been harmed by an increase in the number of people on state-supported insurance rolls. They claim that when Congress last year repealed the tax penalty for the so-called individual mandate, it eliminated the U.S. Supreme Court's rationale for finding the Affordable Care Act constitutional in 2012. The Texas judge agreed. He likened the debate over which provisions of the law should stand or failed to watching a slow game of Jenga, each party poking at a different provision to see if the Affordable Care Act falls. He also wrote that it's clear the individual mandate is the linchpin of the law without marching through every nook and cranny of the ACS 900 plus pages. President Donald Trump and Texas Attorney General Ken Paxton praised the ruling, while the American Medical Association called the decision an unfortunate step backward for our health system. Some healthcare law experts were quick to critique the judge's reasoning and predicted the ruling will be overturned. With that story, we end tonight's news at 7 on Paradise TV. But before I take a leave of you, a recap of our top stories. 
Best Water breaks silence over suspension from markets with a stronger quality delivery promise. Elsewhere in the Democratic Republic of Congo, a six days old baby girl survives Ebola. In sports, Mohamed Salah wins BBC African Footballer Award for a second straight year. And in the US, Obamacare has been thrown out by a judge, raising insurance uncertainty. Dinka and Wolof respectively. Meanwhile, you can follow us on our social media platforms at Paradise TV on Facebook, YouTube and Instagram. Thank you for joining us. My name is Khadija Bokum. Do enjoy the rest of our programs.